Hello and welcome back to Sunless Sunday where we stay the Sunless Sea with me, Barden and Lady Sakura. Okay, so luckily, since the last time, the game I the game didn't autosave after I'd made those mistakes selling stuff. So I was able to sell them again and save myself some echoes. So that's a pretty good pretty good thing for me. Because I did make a lot of very bad mistakes. Now, let's see. So we got all of our cargo in our hold, right? Yeah. Right, so let's work out where we're going to go next. So we're here at Can Shadow. I remember now, was the next thing to go to Igol and up? And then come down this way. And then across, I think it might have been. We may have all also been going to the Mangrove College, I'm not sure. But I think next we're going to head to, to Eigel. Actually, we might even take in Visage on the way. Would that make more sense? Camp Gold, Chill Nate. Yeah, because then it stops us having to do a zigzag. So maybe Visage, Rose Gate, and then up to Eigel is probably the best I did. So then when we come across Isle of Cats, okay, right. We have a sort of an idea of what we're doing, right. So let's head on out. We don't have a great amount of, um, of supplies. So we need to be careful of that as well, because we've got to We've got to get all the way up and then down to Aestabal before we get any real, um, any real chance to, to get a lot of supplies. Ah, it's nice music as well. But I'm hoping that everyone is keeping safe out there. I'm kind of getting, we're getting to a point here now where things are getting a little more serious with the whole COVID-19 stuff, but we're also getting ready to move uh, back to Ireland. So, well, back for me, but to Ireland for my wife, who's Japanese. Um, yeah, so it's kind of getting close to, to that point now. We've got a couple of weeks before we go. Um, we've still got a lot of things to do before we go there as well. So I'm going to be busy for the next while. So I'm trying to get as much recorded as I can before, before we head there. Okay, so let's get our port report first. This will have to do. Department, a departing merchant gives you a confused account of crocodiles and honey cakes and something about ear blockage. To this, you add your own impressions about the street layout close to the port, the types of commerce here. When the lights are especially bright, it is possible to make out the details of the profile of the great stone face. Okay, and then we'll go ashore. All those who enter must play their parts. The sign is visible only after you've crossed the threshold. Okay, let's check in. And we're going to play. Let's go with the frog. Moon Moth lifts the mask and places it over your head. The eye holes are large and they are fitted with spectacles. These improve your view of the environment, though you must look bull bide from the other side. There is a much, there is also a mechanism attached to the mouthpiece which magnifies any sounds you make. Even your breathing, you start to thank the moon moth and it comes out as a booming croak. May you profit from your visit and knowledge, says moon moth. Its wings fold neatly over its beak. Okay, so let's go to the library. Visit the library apart, so called because all the books are fragmentary, perhaps. Stupid a little, enter the dark. 
a room of heavy stone guarded by a golden statuette of a woman with outstretched arms, the scroll niches, sorted to correspond to a variety of masks, the jackal and the lioness, the crocodile and dung beetle, a woman in a mask of a lotus blossom is standing at a lectern, reading in silence. Let's ask about the purpose of this room. What sort of parts are they, anyway? Filed on M for mast, Moomot explains, people think it means something like library of fragments, but this is wrong. The parts in question are like parts in a play. This is where the denizens of Visage come in order to learn how to perform their masks more accurately, more completely, with a truer spirit. Let's study the scroll in a bumbling way. Hearts guarded. Taking the nearest, you read it aloud. For guarding against the loss of the heart, Moonmoth takes it from you, rolls it tightly, and returns it to his niche. Niche. There are many ways of guarding against the loss of the heart, as there are different masks. It explains in that same light and in different voice. Okay, then... Uh, yeah, let's trade masks. It has been making subtle overtures for some time. You only now understand them. It is keen to go. It draws you aside it into a closet in the custom house. Had enough visage, it tells you frankly. Here, you take my mask and pretend to be me, and I'll trade the visitor mask and get on some departing ship. Give my life back. Its face, no. Now you see her face is aging but unlined. A lifetime of never needing to use a facial expression. Okay. Uh, then we're going to... Let's visit the Temple of the Apis. Why not? All the denizens of Visage go there sooner or later. The Wounded God. In the center of the temple is a black bull with a white diamond on its face. It is tied in place with heavy ropes and it is wounded in the thigh. From this wound it bleeds copiously without dying. Ask whether the, wool, the bull will be all right. It doesn't look well. Try to bandage the bull. It is a shame to see it suffering so. Tough challenge. Offer to sell them a new undamaged bull. You could arrange an import through the proper contact. Collect some of the blood for yourself. Perhaps it is a holy relic. Perhaps it could be sold as one to unsuspecting buyers elsewhere. Leave a respectful token of offering. Even wounded, it remains a god. Yeah, let's see that. Impeccable. The tokens are small and not very valuable, as suits your lower rank in the community. The priests arrange them on a table with other small items. As you go out, you pass by the more impressive gifts, drafting tools from the chief geometer, geometer, scales from jackal, a heap of foreign coin brought home by crocodile. You've gained one visage expertise and parts. Okay, good. Um, let's visit the house of the chief geometer then. It is understood to be an honor. Lines in wet ground. Each morning, the man in the cobra mask draws lines in the mud, flat with pointed steel rod. This apportions to each inhabitant a small trapezoidal area from which to harvest mushrooms and to scrape salt. No plot is ever preserved from one day to the next. This man is the chief geometer, the keeper of directions, master of land measures and sea measures. Okay, so let's continue. Now you have been invited to his home. At this time, customarily appointed for him to receive those who are not his equal in rank, yet not so far beneath him as to deserve to be ignored. What ceremonial gift will you bring? Yeah, let's bring a fresh candle. We heard he likes candles. Why not? Hunger set aside. The gift is suited to him personally. One can see this by the way that he hesitates regretfully before he performs the rejection that etiquette requires. It was thoughtful, but it is not the gift of moth to cobra, therefore wrong. Oh, not good. Right, uh, let's visit the face. At the proper time, you must, of course, Wait until your work with this day's crop of frogs and locusts is complete. It would not be suitable to bring them along. 
Ok. See, what are we going to do? Let's look for the doorway into the year. Unlock with visage ritual participants. We have 11. Okay, good. Let's try that. Hard to find. Climb up along the side of flourishing neck, flourishing cheek, following a staircase of worn steps. You don't remember the path being this difficult before. The entry when you come to it is plugged with a substance fibrous as spider silk, but slick and waxy to the touch. Is this new? Does it grow here? Do they clear it away every year? Is it a form of security? But it doesn't yield to your hand. Okay, and then... Right. What are we going to do then? Let's visit there. Okay, let's try this. Offer instructions to the frog that found its way up here. With a 7% chance. That's the sort of thing your moth would have done to you. Credible on both sides. You tell the frog a partially true story about how this face was carved. The frog replies with an amplified belch and a story it heard about the sphinxes known as the salt lines. It's really a very good frog. Cool. And then now we can end the performance. Okay. Let's do that. We lose 10 terror. We like that. Calmer. When the other citizens are distracted, you find your way to the familiar custom house and rid yourself of mask and robe. There's satisfaction in laying aside a role well performed. Okay, well, well done us then, I guess. Uh, there are no shops, so we're going to leave and head in this direction because we want to go to Rosegate, right? Right? Yeah. I'm not sure whether you're real or not. Kind of guessing maybe you're not because you're not setting off any kind of detection on our part. That's not always a true indication. And we're going to get ourselves down and get the rose gate. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Behemoth stash, right? That's that thing is. You stay there, buddy. We do not need to be dealing with you. Something else there, look. The deep dark depths. Right, let's get in there. Okay. Let's take a pamphlet. Neatly printed histories of the shop are stacked high on one of the display cases and others encourage visitors to take one. Self-published plaudits. The pamphlet describes Rogge as a cigar shop with a factory on the upper floor. True. Here they produce and sell an unparalleled variety of cigars. Also true. The tobacconist is described as world-renowned figure, respected for his dedication to his craft and the brilliance of his creation. Creative vision. Hmm. Papa boasts that his genius will forever alter the tobacconist's arts. Well, that remains to be proven. Okay, cool. So we've got that. We don't need to sample a high quality cigar. No, I don't think we'll do anything else here. Could buy some fuel, but it's a bit expensive. And we've got enough fuel for the moment. Yeah, so I think we'll just leave it and get ourselves going. We could sell a hunter's eye. Oh, but I'm going to take it. I'm going to keep it, or keep it, should I say. Right, let's go and get ourselves back up before this thing comes and gets us, wherever it is.
Okay, and then head on. Check our map. So we're going to Eigel next, right? So we look at all the places where we can go with our submarine. So I go Gampol, Hideaway, Nook. Um, where's the one up here? The Ragged Crow. I think we're going to be able to go to every one of them this time. Okay. Um, but we're going to get ourselves to Eigel now. I want to stay close to... The, uh oh no, Now I don't want to stay close to the shore. It's going to get shot at. Ooh, no, we don't like that. Let's leave you behind, buddy. Enough of your crap. Okay. Somewhere about here. We should dive, I think. Yeah, let's leave him where he's doing. If you want to dive under the water in your Nodden submarine ship and attack us, it's fair enough. I don't like how far we are away though from where we want to go. There's Eichel there. Okay, we're not, okay, not too bad. Okay, and we pop. Right. So, first of all, let's get our port to port. The first mate does not want an accurate report to reach the Adam Tree. They will reward you with extra needles, they say. A grave and holy place. You invent a tale of the life in the fortress kettle. Daily feasts held at midnight in Jerusalem. According to the purse's pocket Switches of holy thorn hung above the doorways, garments of grey linen and black stitching. You do not mention the sickness or the constant need for solace fruit, or the hatches of the fortress kettle that are kept locked, or the occasional groans from below. You say nothing of the wounded captain. Okay, and we're going to do the rest of our visit here next time. So hope you have enjoyed, hope you're keeping safe and hope to see you next time. Goodbye. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, maybe you'll hit the subscribe button there on the right and check out some other videos here on the left.